Hello everyone, welcome to Suffolk, welcome to my mum's house and welcome to this art haul that I'm going to be sharing with you today. I have bought a few little bits since I've been here in Suffolk and I thought it would be fun to share them with you because I have a really nice mini palette of coloured pencils here for you. I have some Wallace Seymour watercolours, I have one Daniel Smith, which is quite a special one, and I have a few other bits and pieces. It's not a massive art haul, but we're going to have a look at what I've got, and then I'm going to do a little bit of swatching for you. And I just thought it would be fun to film this. I haven't put a video up on YouTube, well, apart from a short which I put up earlier today. <laughs> I haven't put up a video on YouTube for so long and that's because I've been in Suffolk. I haven't been working quite as much as I would normally and my time is limited for editing videos and so on. But I do have another one in the works for you. But this one is going up next because I thought this would be fun and it would kind of tide you over until you can have one that I'm editing. Okay, does that make sense? <laughs> let's hope so. Right, let's have a look at these. I think let's start with the brushes. So on Jackson's, I got this oil and acrylic brush comparison set. So I've got back into acrylic painting on canvas just recently and um, has a cat hair on it. <laughs> Everything has a cat hair on it. If you see lots of cat hairs, you'll just have to ignore them. So I actually got these with my affiliate credit. Now I haven't had as much affiliate credit just recently. Um, there was a time where I had quite a bit, but I guess people just haven't been using my link as much for whatever reason. I do leave it in the description beneath each video, by the way. But I did have a little bit, and so I thought I would try these. These have been on my wish list for a while. So they're Jackson's own brand brushes. You get a hog bristle hairbrush fill bit number four, a Jackson's Black Hog Bristle Brush Flat, number six, and a Jackson's Akoya White Synthetic Bristle Hair Brush, bright, number six. So we won't open those, and I'm not going to use them today because I don't have the um, acrylic paints here with me. So um, I just thought I would share those with you. They have been something on my wish list for a while. I always like to try different brushes and see whether I come up with a new favorite. So that's why I have those. I also got from Jackson's um, something else that I had had my eye on. Now these were on a really good offer. I actually got them in a sale and so I got them for eight pounds something and they are the Pro Art miniature painting brushes. So I use Pro Art brushes all the time in my work. Let's see if we can get these out. Um, I'll just show you one of them. So you see they're apps. Oh, they're all coming out together. Okay, they come as a group. So I'm going to hold that up like that, hold it against that, and hope that you can see just how tiny that brush is. So we have a 2 0, a 3 0, a 5 0, and a 10 0. That might be the tiniest brush I will have ever worked with, but um, they were a very good deal. It worked out at like £2 something a brush. And um, yeah, I really love the Pro Art brushes. I often use the Series 101 round brushes by Pro Art. And I like to use the really tiny ones, like the 30 and 40 for details in my work. But these miniature ones look very similar. And so they'll be really handy for me to have, because as you know, if you know me, you know I like to add a lot of detail. So I need really tiny brushes. Um, with brushes in mind, <laughs> let's have a look at these ones. I placed a new order for Betty Hayway's brushes. These are an amazing brush. I would recommend them to anyone they make using watercolour, a complete pleasure. If I can get into these, I don't think I can, or can I? Hold on, I'm gonna have to go and get some scissors. I found my mum's kitchen scissors. Let's hope she doesn't mind. Sorry, mum if you're watching. Right, I'm gonna show you this one because this one is a number seven and this is the one I find I use most often. Look at that point. So they hold a lot of pigment and a lot of water because they have quite a thick, do you call that part the belly of the brush or something? But the point is so fine. Sorry, I think there's a tractor about to, yeah, there's a tractor about to go past. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, let's carry on. Yeah, they have a really fine point and they are amazing. And I really like the number seven because you can do so much with it. You can use it for big washers and you can also use it for details. So if you're just gonna get one, I would recommend the number seven. And I got a number five, which is my second favorite size from them. And I got a zero, which I haven't used before. So I'm gonna see what one of their tiny brushes is like. So I got these from the Chelsea Paper Company. I don't know whether anyone else stocks them. This is the place I've always got them from. So I'll try and remember to leave links in the description underneath this video. I'm not sponsored, it's not an affiliate link. The Jackson's link in my description will be an affiliate link, but everything else won't. So there we go, we have quite a few new brushes. So next, let's move on to the Derwent Lightfast. So I decided with my affiliate credit to get, I've got eight colors here, one of which I have used before and I love, so I got an extra one. Seven of which I hadn't tried before. So we have Wheat, which is a lovely, as the name would suggest, <laughs> a wheat kind of colour. So it's kind of sandy, beigey type of thing. And then I decided to get a couple of greys. I'm going to swatch all of these for you in a minute. So I got Platinum, which is a really lovely blue grey and cloud grey I th must admit that I was attracted to this one for the name <laughs> but yeah it's a slightly darker grey and then I have spruce green which is one of my favourite greens ever now this is the pencil that I use quite a lot so that's why I bought a second one because I don't want to run out of that um, I have light bronze, which looks like a greeny kind of colour. So I would say that looks like a greeny kind of bronze, but we're going to find out when I swatch it. And then I have a sienna because I love a kind of pinkish, rusty colour. Chestnut, another lovely dark brown, sort of a reddish brown. And raisin, another reddish brown. And also from Jackson's. I got the Daniel Smith Lapis Lazuli, is it Lazuli? Lapis Lazuli? <laughs> I can't remember how we say it in the UK. I hear so many Americans saying it, I can't remember how to say it. Lapis Lazuli, I think is how we say it in the UK. Now, I know a lot of people have complained about this one, saying that the colour isn't strong enough. Well, I had a little dot card and I tried this, like a little sample. And I tried it and it was this most gorgeous pale blue, which I thought would fit in really well with my work. So I don't mind that it's kind of a weaker blue, but I'm gonna show you exactly what it's like in a minute. We're gonna swatch that. And then from, these are Wallace Seymour paints, but I didn't get them from my usual place. I actually got them from somebody on eBay. So I got Borders Red, which I haven't tried before. Burnt Umber Dark, sorry, Burnt Umber Extra Dark, actually, which I haven't tried before, and Torridon Sandstone. Now, the reason I bought this one, bit of a spoiler alert for my Patreon Swatching Club members, you're going to get a sample of this on your dot cards for May. So that's why I bought this one. I actually have this colour. It's a really interesting, textured, slightly speckled kind of paint. And um, yeah, it's going to be one of the six colours they get on their watercolour dot card. So sorry about the spoiler, patrons. Um, I don't usually tell them what they're getting, but they won't know the other five colours. So um, I don't think it matters that I've shared this one. But we're going to swatch those. So I'm going to pop those over there. And then the other things, I went on a little shopping trip with my mum to Ipswich the other day. And it wasn't a very successful shopping trip in general, but I did find a few little art bits. <laughs> we also had a really nice lunch in a pub called The Woolpack. The lunch was incredible and the pub itself was really lovely. It was like, kind of like a classic English country pub. It was near Christchurch Park. If any of you know Ipswich, 
go to that pub because it's just amazing. The people are really nice too. So we're definitely going back to that. We kind of want to go one Sunday for like a Sunday lunch. Anyway, I digress. Let's get on to that. <laughs> This is not all, believe it or not. Right, um, not a pub review. So I went into TK Maxx of all places and TK Maxx seems to have some art and stationery supplies. I don't know whether any of you know that, but they do in their kind of homewares department. They'll have like a section of books, a section of cards, and that's where you'll find the stationery and art supplies. And they have like an ever-changing selection of stuff. So you can't be guaranteed to go in and actually find say for example this particular pad it's kind of the luck of the draw with tk maxx isn't it but you do find some good bargains sometimes and i have bought many a moleskin from tk maxx that were like a third or less of the price of a normal moleskin sketchbook or notebook um, this one seemed a pretty good deal because it's the faber castell sketch pad it says it's ideal for graphite colored and watercolor pencils so we're going to be trying this out later and on the back, it says that the recommended retail price is $7.99, our price $3.99. I thought for a 40 sheet pad of Faber-Castell paper, $3.99 was a pretty good deal. So um, I've never tried that before, but we're gonna give that a go. And then I went into, I think it's called, did it used to be called Tiger and it's now called Flying Tiger? But it's one of those little shops that's just full of interesting little bits and pieces that you didn't know you needed, but then you end up buying. So I went in there, resisted everything apart from these two things. <laughs> so I resisted a lot of stuff, but um, I wanted to get some sticky tabs. So these are just little like little post-it note kind of things and you can put them in books um, so I'm going to use them in like art books if I want to use certain things for reference so that I can identify where the pages are. I might use them if I do a sketchbook tour or something like that but they were I think £1.50 which is not cheap is it but they were really pretty colours and I needed some so I thought I would get them. And lastly we have a really nice bamboo clipboard. Now the reason I got this, I think this was four pounds, it's another cat hair, they're getting everywhere. So the reason I got this is because when I'm working, say for example on the sofa in the evening, um, I've been working on like little ink drawings, little miniatures, and the paper, I'm often balancing it on like a book or something like that. And I thought it'd be really useful when I saw these to have a clipboard that I can just take around with me. I can have it on my lap on the sofa. I could draw in bed if I wanted. I could take it out on location if I want to just use separate sheets of paper and not work in a sketchbook. It's quite light. It's really nice. It was four quid and um, I thought I would get it. <laughs> so there we go. There's my art haul uh, from various places and we're now going to test the paints and the pencils and the Faber-Castell paper. We have an evening beam of sunlight coming in here now. And I'm sorry, did I mention before about the weird angle? I haven't got my overhead thingy like I have in Surrey. So you're on a tripod and you're at a slightly strange angle. And um, yeah, it's making my hands look funny. I just looked at the other bit of footage and um, yeah. <laughs> so just ignore how my hands look. They do not look like um, sausage fingers in real life. I think it's the proximity to the camera or something. Anyway, you probably don't care, so I'll just shut up about that. But um, yes, this smells amazing. It's got that, oh, that lovely new pad of paper smell. Um, that first bit of paper looks slightly, it's a bit marked, so it's a good thing we're using it for swatching. But yeah, this is like cartridge paper. It's kind of heavyweight um does it say what gsm it is 160 so it's quite nice um gonna be great for drawing so i think we should try the pencils first and then i'll do a quick swatch of the watercolors for you um and i'll show you the betty hayways number seven brush what i actually might do is go and get my older betty hayways number seven I've already used. I'm kind of like this with new brushes. I don't know whether any of you are like this, but I get them and think, 
um, I'm going to save them until the other ones have actually kind of really worn out. Um, I don't like to kind of start them before I need to. I'm a bit precious with brushes, particularly the Betty Hayways, because they're a little bit more expensive. So um, I think I'll go upstairs. I'll go and get my one that I have been using. Right. I'm really rambling today, aren't I? <laughs> OK, so this is the Derwent Light Fast Wheat. Let's turn it round like that and see whether... Shall I do like a really firm, I'm going to do like a really firm um, swatch and then we'll do a lighter one beside it. Let me just check the angle of this. Oh, sorry, I've just knocked the camera. Oh, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, you can see. I feel this is lacking the professionalism of my normal videos. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'm like that professional at the best of times, but I mean, no, I shouldn't do myself down. I'm OK, aren't I? I make sure the lighting is good, that you have a clear view of things and all of that. And I do try and be professional. OK, so that's wheat. Shall we write down what that is in case any of you? I'm just going to grab one of my other pencils here. What have I got? Need one with a sharp point. Okay, this is the Derwent Lightfast Granite. You see, I like the Lightfasts. So this is one of the pencils I've just got here with me in my travel kit. Um, so let's write under there, wheat. This is not gonna be neat swatching. But yeah, I feel like this video is very haphazard. But we're just gonna go with it. Um, actually, next I'm gonna try the platinum. Let's do a really nice firm swatch of that. It does feel weird working from this angle. <laughs> it's quite fun to be able to share these with you from Suffolk. I just wanted to put up a little video for you because it's been such a long time, but it's been a really, really hectic month. And I have had two dental appointments and one optician's appointment as well to fit in and so it's been a little bit stressful as well that's a really nice gray blue i like that a lot so um pop platinum i'm just gonna have to turn that around i'm sorry and next let's try the cloud gray so you see that's quite a lot darker it's a really nice I would call that a kind of mid grey, really. Mid to dark, quite a neutral grey. Erring on the side of being a bit colder, I think. Nicely textured when you do it like that, isn't it? But yeah, what a brilliant name, Cloud Grey. I love that. What should we do next? Maybe the spruce green. Um, I'm going to do that. Should I do that? Oh, let's just go along like this. So you'll see why I love this green so much. It's a beautiful, dark, natural looking green. It's not too blue because a lot of darker greens I found do tend to lean towards blue. It kind of is a little bit blue, but not too much. And it's really nice and natural. So that's called spruce green and is one of my favourites. Where's my where's my pencil gone? Look at that one. Yeah. Um screen. I like this paper, it feels good to work on. And then we're going to go for light bronze. This is a new one for me. That's a lovely natural colour. It looks a little bit like, um, it's like an ochre kind of. Lovely warm colour. 
absolutely fantastic for landscapes. All of these would be fantastic for landscapes because I am primarily a landscape artist. So um, I like a lot of muted natural colours. Um, okay, so that's light bronze. Gosh, it's really hard writing at an angle. <laughs> This looks terrible. Um, let's try, I think the next one we'll try is Sienna. Look at that, it's a pretty colour. Reminds me a bit of those Wallace Seymour paints actually. That is like a Wallace Seymour paint colour. Beautiful, it's got slightly, I would say slightly pinkish tone to it sort of like a rusty pink mm, it's nice so just sienna and i think the next i think i think chestnut's going to be the darkest one so let's do raisin we're going to do that there so that's a gorgeous reddish brown Really quite dark. I would say that has a hint of, like a hint of violet. It's a bit like a kaput mortem. That's nice. Raisin. And finally, chestnut. Beautiful darker brown with a definite red undertone. And those are going to be some nice pencils to add to my existing coloured pencil collection. I'm going to hold them up to the camera for you in a minute. Oh no, I was going to write granite because that's what's on this pencil. Honestly, what is wrong with me? Chestnut. Okay, excuse the terrible writing. I'm going to get round off this chair and I'm going to make sure that this is focused and that you can see it properly. Hopefully you can see that well. So here's my used Betty Hayways brush. You see, they keep the point. This one's been used quite a lot and they keep the point so nicely. So we're going to swatch these four colours with this brush, let's just refocus that. So I'm just going to squeeze these onto the page and um, and we'll swatch them like that because this is a very informal swatching session. <laughs> it's a very informal video in general, isn't it? Um, okay, so let's squeeze that out. Oh, quite a lot of binder came out with that. The Wallace Seymour paints are a little bit like that. Sometimes you have to get a toothpick in there and just sort of um, just mix them up a bit. Let's just do that on the page. Look how lovely that is. Beautiful pinkish sort of brown colour and it has speckles in it which um, you will see when I hold it up to the camera if you can't see already. Let's just have a little look. Oh yeah, that is in focus, isn't it? Yeah. The next one is Borders Red. So yeah, patrons, you're gonna get a sample of this one. So those of you who are signed up this month for May, you'll be receiving a sample of that, along with five others which I won't tell you about. Okay, so this one is Borders Red. So this one I think I saw Crixis using and I thought it looked like a really nice colour. So again, it's that kind of, let's just add a bit more water to that. It's that kind of speckled look, which is really interesting actually when you use them in a piece because it gives them extra texture, which I really like. And then we have Burnt Umber extra dark 
This is because I tend to like burnt umbers. I like burnt umbers and raw umbers. And um, I just thought it'd be nice to have a Wallace Seymour version. Oh, look at that. Gosh, that one is amazing. It's so much pigment. I'm gonna just do another swatch there with a bit more water so you can, um, can see it a little bit more watered down. There we go, diluted, that's the word. <laughs> Very nice colours, aren't they? Beautiful. So finally, let's have a look at the Daniel Smith Lapis Lazuli. I'm going to just put a bit of that on there. And let's give this a good rinse. Just do it this way. Mix that in a bit. It's quite a thick paint, this one. The consistency is thick. You see, the colour is very subtle. Like, I would use it. I'm just going to check that this is in shot. Yes, it is. Sorry, I keep worrying that it's not. Um, I would use it like this where it's really in a wash, because it's got this slightly greyish blue look to it. And that is perfect for the kind of skies I do. Like if I wanted a slightly more blue sky than the sky I would perhaps normally do in my paintings. Um, but I don't want it to look really summery. I don't want it to be really bright blue, like a cerulean kind of blue. I love this kind of blue. So I think this one is going to be a very useful paint for me to have. But yeah, if you were looking for a strong lapis lazuli, then this probably isn't the one for you. But if you're looking for one that is very subtle and I think really quite beautiful, then I would recommend it. It's quite expensive. This tube was, because it's a large tube, um, I think it was about £24 or something like that, which is insane. And I probably wouldn't have got it if I didn't have the affiliate credit. But because I had the affiliate credit, I thought I would treat myself to it and I'm sure it will be well used. So that's the benefit of the affiliate credit. It allows me to try things that I wouldn't ordinarily try. I'm just going to hold these up to the camera and then I think... I will say goodbye to you and I will clear this table in time for dinner. Let me just focus that. We're losing the light a bit, aren't we? I hope you don't mind that this video has been a bit haphazard, but it has been fun sharing these with you. So thank you for joining me and my slightly more professional videos will be back very soon. <laughs> okay, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my videos in general, <laughs> maybe consider subscribing and joining our lovely community that we're building here. Um, Patreon, if you want to check that out, the link is in the description. I will try to remember to link to the different places I got the art supplies. And yeah, take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon with another, hopefully, slightly more normal video. <laughs> okay, take care everyone. See you soon.